Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for inviting me to present and for letting me do a pre recorded presentation because of the time zone difference. I appreciate the consideration. Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah, I'll be joining in person a little later. With that, I'll begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Awudu bilahi min ashaytanir rajim. The Quran warns us in Surah 17, Ayah 36, do not pursue something of which you have no knowledge. Surely the hearing, the sight, and the understandings all will be interrogated. This warning applies to the use of AI in approaching the Quran. I don't say that as someone who's opposed to the use of technology. I've been using a personal computer since the 1980s. When I edited my own registry entries in DOS to troubleshoot issues rather than calling tech support. I dialed into bulletin board services in cyberspace on a 300 baud modem before the internet as we know it even existed. And for the last 30 years, I've planned all my hardware upgrades around Bethesda's next big video game release. Professionally, I published a chapter on approaching Hadith and Sunnah in the digital age back in 2010. And my current book project on Hadith and Sunnah will have an updated chapter on that. It's precisely my long use of technology that leads me to sound a cautionary note about the use of AI in the translation and interpretation of the Quran. In the June 2024 article titled, Communicating the Cultural Other, Trust and Bias in Generative AI and Large Language Models, Christopher Jenks notes that studies show people tend to put more trust in machines as impartial than they do in humans. I argue that particularly in relation to AI, that trust is seriously misplaced. Stefan Furigal's 2023 article on generative AI defines it as, quote, computational techniques that are capable of generating seemingly new, meaningful content, end quote. After discussing AI at both the conceptual and application levels, he goes on to discuss issues and limitations with AI. These include the reflection and amplification of human biases. Jenks explains that this occurs because algorithms come from humans and that, quote, algorithmic biases are cultural biases. Humans imprint their own prejudices and subjectivities onto machines, end quote. The problem of AI reflecting and amplifying Human biases is well known and widespread. These biases include religious biases, not only Islamophobic biases on the part of non-Muslims, but biases among Muslims of different schools of thought and cultural backgrounds. Another problem highlighted by Purigal is the problem of incorrect output that is, quote, indistinguishable from authentic content and may contain misinformation and deceive users, end quote. An example of this is the AI-generated speech titled Malcolm X and the Israel-Palestine Conflict, available on YouTube. According to the description of the video, this is a speech Malcolm X gave in 1964. The problem is there is no evidence that Malcolm X ever gave this speech. 
the description of the video does mention that ChatGPT was used. But then the only mention of the use of AI is that AI was used to create storyline elements to accompany the speech. But again, there is no evidence that Malcolm X ever made this speech. While this sort of blatant fabrication would be impossible with the Arabic text of the Quran, less egregious but equally troubling incorrect output can be generated by AI in relation to translation and interpretation. For example, a translator recently posted an exchange with AI on Facebook about the translation of the term Arak in Quran 96.2. In that exchange, AI said, quote, the traditional translation of alak as a clinging substance often focuses on the embryological aspect, end quote. This is an excellent example of the kind of incorrect output that makes AI unreliable in assessing a particular translation. The translation of ala as a clinging substance did not appear until the late 20th and early 21st centuries, after the publication of Dr. Keith Moore's book, The Developing Human with Islamic Editions, published in 1983. That makes it a contemporary rather than a traditional translation. The first English translation of the Quran is the translation of George Sale, published in 1734. Sale renders the term alak as congealed blood, likely influenced by the Latin translation of Robert of Ketton, published in 1143. 200 years after Sale and 800 years after Robert of Ketton, Yusuf Ali rendered the term alak as a clot of congealed blood. Pickthall rendered it simply as a clot. All other translators followed this translation until Mohammed Assad translated it as germ cell in 1980. AI was mistaken in calling a clinging substance the traditional translation of the Arabic term alak. It's not. It's a translation that emerged after eight and a half centuries of translating alak as some kind of blood clot. Moreover, it's a translation that emerged at a particular point in time in response to a specific understanding of human development in the womb. But AI didn't know that. AI also made no mention of the meanings of the Arabic root Ein Lam Qaf. AI ignored both the original language of the Quran and the history and evolution of the Quran's translation into Western languages. AI did that because that information was not in the data that it consulted in forming its conclusions about the meaning of Quran 96.2. AI only knows what it's programmed and trained to know. AI will always reflect not only the biases, but also the ignorance of the human beings that influence it at every stage, from programming to training to deployment and use.
AI is not responsible for its limitations. That responsibility falls on the human beings who conceive it, program it, and use it. It's not AI whose hearing, sight, and understanding will be interrogated. It's us. We are the ones who are responsible, those of us who conceive it, program it, and use it. May Allah guide us to be ever more conscious of our own biases and limitations and to work together to overcome them. Thank you and salamu alaykum.